We all know about the famous tomb of Tutankhamun. We all heard the stories about Howard Carter discovering it and how much artifacts they found. And today we're going to look into, in my personal opinion, the two most intriguing artifacts found in his tomb. The two mummified infants. My name is Kaylee and today we're going to look into why these two baby mummies were laid to rest with their father in the tomb of Tutankhamun instead of being buried in a tomb of their own. Why were they laid to rest with him instead of in a place of themselves? But before we can answer a question like that, we first need to look into the layout of the tomb of Tutankhamun. Because this is still a peculiar tomb, as I have spoken about this earlier in a video. I have looked into the hypothesis of his sisters maybe ruling before him, and this tomb not necessarily made to house a king. I'll add a link to that video in the description down below, and I'll leave that video in the end card, so you can easily find it. The staircase leads down to the first doorway. Behind this is an open space leading to a second doorway. Behind the second doorway is the antechamber with a small annex to the left side of the back wall. When entering the antechamber and facing to the right, you see the doorway to the burial chamber. The burial chamber was the only decorated chamber in the entire tomb. When entering the burial chamber and facing right again, you can go through the doorway leading to the treasury chamber. I will in the future create a whole in-depth video about the tomb of Tutankhamun, the artifacts found and the entire campaign led by Howard Carter. And with that, the difficulties they faced, carefully recording and assessing and cataloging each item from the tomb, including a dispute between Carter and the Egyptian authorities. So definitely stay tuned for that in the future. As I previously mentioned, along the thousands of artifacts they discovered in Tutankhamun's tomb, they discovered two mummified remains of infants. These two mummified remains were found in the treasury section of the tomb in 1925, in a simple undecorated wooden box of which the lid had already been removed in ancient times by grave robbers in the northeastern corner of this room. Their coffins were placed side by side, head to toe. Some wood chips had been taken off the foot of the coffin of the larger mummy to fit it inside the wooden box. Both outer coffins for the infants were covered in a black resin with gilded bands. On these bands, both babies were named the Osiris, and both inner coffins were covered in gold foil. The mummified remains were referred to as 317A and 317B, there are no names given to these babies. So let's take a look into the mummified remains before we try to answer the question of why they were laid to rest with their father, Tutankhamun, instead of in a grave of their own. 317A was most likely a baby girl and born very prematurely between four and six months of gestation. The head of this mummy was covered by a gilded death mask that was way too big. During the autopsy of the mummy conducted in 1932 by Douglas Derry, the body of the mummy was noted to be 25.75 cm in length. The skin was in an overall good condition, although very brittle and greyish in color. The body lacked eyebrows and eyelashes, although silky light-colored hair was found on the head. The lack of eyebrows and eyelashes probably has to do with the age of the infant. The eyelids of this baby mummy were slightly open, which is kind of ominous, to be completely honest. The team discovered the remains of an umbilical cord of 21 millimeters that was preserved with the infant. During the Egyptian mummy project in July 2008, the mummy underwent a CT scan. It was found to be in very poor condition and they could not confirm the sex to be female. A gestational age of 24 weeks was confirmed by the length of the humerus. The skull was discovered to be filled with either brain tissue or embalming materials. The torso was most likely filled with embalming packs. 
The body showed no deformities and the cause of death could not be determined. 317B was most definitely a baby girl and she was unfortunately a stillborn at almost the full term of the pregnancy. This mummy did not have a death mask, although there was a mask found in Tutankhamun's embalming cache that could have belonged to this infant. During the autopsy conducted by Douglas Derry in 1932, the body of the mummy was measured to be 36.1 cm in length. This mummy was wrapped in the same fashion as the other infant, with various pads, bandaging on the feet, legs, abdomen and ankles to give the mummy some shape. It was noted that this mummy wasn't as well preserved as the other, thought to be female and over seven months of gestation. The skin was noted to be brittle and the same greyish color as the other mummy. There was fine hair found on the head and this body did have eyebrows and eyelashes, unlike the smaller mummy. The eyes of this baby mummy were wide open and only contained the shrunken eyeballs and the thought of that, honestly, really kind of freaks me out. That's a horror movie. The inside of the skull was filled with linen that was put there by pushing it through the right nostril. No umbilical cord was found and the navel wasn't retracted, which meant that the umbilical cord was cut off instead of dying off naturally. There was an incision made near the pelvic bone, which was sealed with resin. The torso and abdomen were stuffed with linen. In 1978, the body of the mummified infant was examined using x-rays, but was found to have suffered damage since it was first discovered. The skull was crushed and ribs were broken. They estimated the age to be between 35 weeks of gestation and full term. They did believe this baby girl to have several deformities, but as I will explain in a moment, most of these were found to have occurred during the mummification process and the padding that was done. So, during the Egyptian Mummy Project in 2008, this mummy was of course examined using the CT scan as well. They actually found the body of this infant to be better preserved than the smaller mummy. This mummy was indeed confirmed to be female and was estimated to have died at 36 weeks of gestation. The spine was found to have no anomalies but was in poor condition and was fractured after death with fragments missing. This gave the appearance of a deformed spine using the X-ray examination. During the King Tutankhamun family project that ran from September 2007 until October 2009, DNA analysis was conducted on the mummies of the two infants, alongside the mummies of many possible family members of Tutankhamun, to find out their connection to the boy king. Only partial matches were obtained, but this was enough to conclude that both stillborn infants were indeed the children of Tutankhamun. There was another partial DNA match with mummy KV21A, which suggests that this mummy was the mother of the two stillborn infants. This would also in turn suggest that mummy KV21A is Ankesenamun. Although there has been some doubt on mummy KV21A being the mother, as the results were statistically not significant enough to be confirmed without a reason of doubt. So now that we know that these two stillborn infants are without a doubt the children of Tutankhamun, the question remains, why were they laid to rest in his tomb instead of being buried or laid to rest in tombs or graves of their own? We finally reached that part of this video. <laughs> the researchers that actually found these mummies in Tutankhamun's tomb were actually completely shocked by this find because this is not something that is done often or that they've encountered much, especially not in ancient Egypt. The remains of both babies are currently being held safe and are being protected in the Grand Museum of Egypt. According to Egyptologist and Professor Salima Ikram, there was a very high mortality rate for infants and children in ancient Egypt. It's not surprising that these two babies were stillborn. But what is extraordinary is to have them carefully mummified, put in these coffins and placed in their father's tomb. 
believes in an explanation for the burial with their father and this is what I was most intrigued by. Of course, this is a hypothesis and this is not proven factual beyond a reason of a doubt, but I do love hypothesizing on these intriguing matters. Joyce Tildesley believes that these two infants were the ultimate insurance policy for King Tutankhamun for his journey in the afterlife. Ancient Egyptians were very big on their insurance policies when it came to the afterlife. They had a plan B, C, D, E and sometimes even more. This was to make sure that if plan A to get into the afterlife failed, they would have more plans that could help them progress the challenges that they faced. The demons and dark souls trying to battle them would need to be conquered one way or another for them to continue their path. Their insurance policies were put in place to help them during this journey and to make them arrive at their destination. We all know that Tutankhamun was wealthy enough to have tombs built or graves dug for both his stillborn infants if he had pleased to do so. So by that logic, there must have been another reason for him to have them carefully wrapped, mummified and placed inside his own tomb. Probably not a practical reason, but definitely suggesting a religious reason. As I've spoken about the importance of women in ancient Egypt before in a few videos in the past, I'll show the thumbnails of those on screen and I'll add them in the description down below. We can probably deduct why he wanted his daughters close to him in the afterlife. Women and girls were seen as protectors. They stood alongside their fathers and husbands, and they were definitely more than just a simple good luck charm. They were most likely the divine protectors of King Tutankhamun in his journey through the underworld on his way to the afterlife. By having their physical bodies close to him as his journey started, their spirits would support and protect him. They were most likely active participants during his trials in the underworld. This makes the discovery of their bodies a lot more significant than we previously thought. They weren't there because he didn't want to build a tomb for them. They were there because he knew he needed their support in his journey to the afterlife. He only ruled for nine years. He wasn't the greatest pharaoh that ever lived. I'm sure he was well aware of that fact and he knew that he needed this extra insurance policy for his place in the afterlife. To me, this possible explanation makes the discovery of their bodies inside his tomb a lot less gruesome and grim. Tutankhamun and his tomb will forever fascinate me and many people around the world for a very long time to come. And looking at these tiny intricate details of something that has fascinated so many, that's making me very excited for things that we might uncover in the future. Artifacts found in his tomb are still being examined to this day, so who knows what we will find. But we won't ever know until we discover more. Up until then, we're just gonna have to deal with what we do know, and I'll keep researching. Before I end this video, I just want to make it known that I have merch and this is a stainless steel water bottle with my logo on it. I love it. I drink out of it every single day now. It's wonderful. Already shown this one in the past. Go get it. My merch will drop on November 1st, 2021. So please follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, follow my Facebook page, History with Kaylee, and keep a close eye on my community page here on YouTube because I will leave the links to the merch in all those places. And be sure that if you don't wanna see me thank everyone, to skip to the end for the bloopers. Stick around for it. This will also be the last video in which I will say the names of the lowest tiers of everyone supporting me. From the next video onward, they will come through the screen throughout the video and I will only name the higher two tiers of both Patreon and the YouTube memberships because it's just taking too much time out of the video. And I do want to thank everyone so all the names will still be in the screen. 
I just need to cut video length and keep everyone's attention for longer instead of losing all of you at around this time of the video. So if you did enjoy watching this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every single time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then I'm ashamed for you, but click the card in the upper right corner. I've put links in the description down below. I've put more links this time, like I said, and I always put videos in the end card. I'd also like to thank my patrons, Barry Scott, Floyd Vaughn, Rox, Jamie Hernandez, Dan Fowler, Jeff Henderson, DJ Klaus Jepsen, CivilPoliticsRadio.com, Ricky, Prabhu DC, Ira Whiteside, Malius Flavus, Tom Barkwell, Jeff Rook, Ben Serinus, Andreas Angourakis, Dibbler666, Wolfgang Zenker, Chance Hotnell, Menno Bucks, Nick, Hans van Poelgeis, James Lettemore, LT Agus, Chris Science, John C. Powers, Timothy Smith, Rex, Ken Mora, Ivan Cruising Speed, Larry Nees, Gerald, and NG6653. With a very special thanks to Gerald Lamontan as my Pyramid Level Patron member. I would also like to thank my channel members. Nafers Guy, Malius Flavus, Henry Hewitt, Stephen Jenny, John Jiff, Buddy, Erik van Dorp, The Giant, Milo Watlin, Harry Hans, Craig George, Moter, Phelps Phelps, Tim Smith, Mario Olbergen, Ira Whiteside, James Fisher, George Kovacs, Joffre Quevra, Stephen Salmon, Patrick, Marcus Lynch, James Latimore, Girls Rock 47, Gary McMillan, Ricky N, Nikolai Dimitrov, Macedonia 007, Kantama, Life of Sarcasm, Case Captain, and Ben Oppenheimer. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to make more of these kind of videos where we look into these strange discoveries and kind of anomalies compared to other artifacts found in tombs like these. And I also had a poll on my community page and I've seen a lot of people wanting me to talk about the meteorite dagger found in Tutankhamun's tomb. And I will definitely do that in the future. Like stick around, I'll do that. And also just join my Discord. I have Discord. I sometimes talk when I'm like not busy with videos. Thanks for another fun one. I enjoy these. I like this. <sighs> Starts to feel like I'm talking to a friend. I'm talking to a camera. Something's wrong with me.